very warm welcome to this week's edition of the Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirtley and it's so good to be in your company as we've actually brought the Ladies Club lounge outside of our studio in Auckland Park and we've brought it to Taxa University and this is our venue for today's show. Lebel is not in today, I'm flying solo but she will be back next week. But this is a program that's all about you too and that's what we always ask you to do is get involved on social media and it's so easy on Twitter, on Facebook as well as on Instagram. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club otherwise at level motsweti at sports at sabc at valen kirtley and those are our handles and that's how you can get in contact with us so today we're going to be focusing in on tennis and something that maybe you would have seen in your december holidays and not thought is a competitive sport but beach tennis is on the rise and we've got a south african duo that are based here in pretoria that are absolutely fantastic helga yaska and kyla yelberton they are a duo that's been together for the last two years and they've been unbeaten since they turned their rivalry into an indomitable partnership hello and welcome to the both of you Thank you. <laughs> I say that it was this rivalry that turned into this great partnership because that's what it was. Hey, you guys have played against each other for the last 16 years that you both have been actually playing tennis? Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> started a long time ago, I think. And yeah, I finally came together at Tux University at the tennis, so that was really good. And now we're partners. Didn't think that would ever happen, but here we are. <laughs> Helga, most people think of beach tennis as something that they do on their December vacation, not something that is a real competitive sport where there's large international competition. That is true. I mean, for me personally, it also started on the beach in Cape Town because me and my brother used to play that in the holidays. But recently, here in South Africa, it started quite um, big, or we tried to start it up. Um, but internationally, in Brazil and Italy, it's very large. Um, instead of playing rugby, everyone plays beach tennis. So it's, it's very big out there. And in South Africa, we're hoping to grow it as well. And I would imagine that actually the cost to entry for this particular form of tennis is actually reduced in comparison to what you would find for your traditional tennis because you actually don't need a massive big court you can just get get out onto the beach and South Africa's got some of the best beaches in the world of course especially and here I think obviously on the coast it's easy to play beach tennis like you said we've got beaches but we're lucky here in Pretoria because we've got up to four or five venues where we can actually play um, and practice beach tennis so we don't necessarily need the sea and the beach to play, which is actually really nice as well. You just need a big round, a bit of sand. And a good partnership. And a good partnership. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you go, you're good to go. You've heard from our two game changers today, Kyla and Halga, and we'll continue that conversation. But we always start the program off with a quote, and today's quote comes from famous businesswoman and philanthropist, Wendy Ackerman. Uh, she says that everything is possible impossible just takes a little bit longer I love that. Wendy Ackerman is widely known as the queen of the South African retail industry. She is one of the founders and an executive director of Pick and Pay Stores. She's also involved in many philanthropic efforts and charitable causes across the country. Wendy has always been deeply involved in the promotion of education in South Africa, particularly in terms of providing access to education for the most needy and underprivileged in society. She certainly is a source of inspiration and motivation for many generations of of female entrepreneurs to come. It's time now for the Ladies Club to take a quick break. But before we do, here's some news that you should be aware of when it comes to women's sports here in South Africa. And that's the Kasafa Cup Championship. South Africa and the Eastern Cape will play host to the tournament once again. And South Africa, Banyana Banyana, fresh from their maiden appearance at the FIFA Women's World Cup, are going for a third consecutive title. They surprised all when they beat Guest Nation Cameroon in the, uh, at the last edition which was hosted in the windy city of Port Elizabeth and they're hoping to do that once again and they'll be confident after having participated at their very first FIFA Women's World Cup. Remember to get in touch on social media so easy hashtag the ladies club will continue after this.
Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. It's a special broadcast. We brought our lounge outside of our Auckland Park studio and we brought it here to Tufts University because the top two beach tennis players are also South Africa's top two beach tennis players. Helga Jeska and Kyla Yelverton are not only the top players here from Pretoria, and yes, I am talking about beach tennis, but they're going to represent South Africa at the World Team Championships when it comes to the sports in just a couple of weeks' time. They are our game changers today. We chatted to them in the very first segment, but let's continue that conversation now. So you guys have both been playing tennis for a very long time, but I'd love to know what that initial reaction was when somebody said, you know what, we've got something for you, it's brilliant, it's on a smaller court, and it's called beach tennis. I think, well, my first experience was at the Davis Cup. Um, it was just an introduction to beach tennis, because obviously it's a lot of tennis players, so it's a great place to get it started. And someone said, come on, Ian, Ian Smith actually, he said to me, come try it, it's much more fun, you know, just see how you'll go at it. And in the beginning I tried and I was still playing like a tennis player because there's a few differences and um, I think the first thing that attracted me was it was so much fun. It was really so fun to be on the sand and, you know, it's music in the background and it's really competitive. but. It's still so much fun, and tennis. I mean, it's. Uh, I love tennis too. I, I really enjoy it still. But beach tennis just brings a different element, and it's almost refreshing to play something so fun and a little bit light-hearted, but just as competitive, and to always be with someone on the court. Because tennis, you're mostly alone, other than doubles. But to be with someone on the court the whole time, it. I mean, it changes it. It does. It changes yeah. it. I think mine was also. I started at the Davis Cup, and it was actually quite funny that. Um, when we started, we just played around, and then Tucker, if he was in the Davis Cup at that time still, joined me, and we played a bit of mix. And it was like so funny. We were like, oh, this can't be real. This can't be actual sport. <laughs> and not even a year later, both of us were playing in Russia. Now, this was last year um, as South African team. So, yeah, it grows quite fast. Kala, what are the actual differences? Um, because you mentioned that you make use of the beach volleyball court. So those are the same dimensions. The beach volleyball court is a lot smaller than your traditional tennis court. Like you said, the dimensions of the beach volleyball court, it's exactly the same, but the net is a bit lower. So we lower it down to 1.7 meters, and um, that's the only difference in size of the court. But I mean, that's a lot higher than your traditional <laughs> net. <laughs> it really, really is. And I mean, especially with the serve in beach tennis, you only get one serve. In tennis you get two. So there is a lot more stress and pressure on the person serving because if you do miss that first serve, which it's tough to sometimes get the perfect serve and a lot of the time you'll miss in the net rather than out the back. Um, so to get that accuracy it's difficult and it takes a lot of practice. But if you, you know, you get it right it's good. And another difference is there's no advantage in beach tennis. As soon as it hits juice, it's sudden death. That point, whoever wins the next point wins the game. So that also changes momentum quite a bit. Um, and the other thing, the last thing, I think, obviously we use softer balls. We use the orange ball. Um, a lot of, in tennis you get a red, orange and green and then proper ball. So we use the orange ball in beach tennis. It's a bit softer and um, it's predominantly doubles. And I think the last thing as well, you can serve anywhere. You don't have to serve somewhere specific on the court. You can serve to anyone. You can point out one player the entire time and serve to that player the entire time if you want to. Do you find that actually the skills needed, I mean, you guys both come from like a hard court tennis background, um, grew up, you know, um, played tennis your entire lives, but then you've just kind of like swapped surfaces. But Going by what I hear Kyla saying, it's not quite like that. I mean, it's not just a difference in surface and a smaller court. It almost seems as if there's like completely different skills that are also required for this game. Yes, definitely. I think you started off by seeing it and you're like, oh, this is so easy. And it is to pick up the paddle and play. Um, but as soon as you get into competitions, you see there's a bit more to it. And that's also, I think, um, when we played at Pocox as well, the volleyball players have such a good dimension, like sense of dimension of the court. We, we, we as tennis players have to get used to that court and feel of it and what is actually going in, what's going out. And also the way you approach it, it's a lot of the tennis players are very aggressive. They want to sort of kill the ball. When beach tennis, a lot of the time you have to play it out and you have to make rallies and you have to keep it going and then a winner is oftentimes a little lob. <laughs> In the beginning you feel so strange because you're like, 
Okay. Seem yeah. Right. That, that was the winner. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. So it's so it's quite it's 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 a game that requires quite a lot of finesse then. Yes. Especially in the ladies. Yes. Yeah. So the ladies and the men's is also a bit different. The late uh, the ladies play a lot more rallies, more finesse, where the men are very very fast, very hardcore. Very um, aggressive. Yeah. yeah. So when you guys train together, have you guys uh, kind of incorporated different training? You mentioned that the beach volleyball players, their eye just on the court is just so much better. They kind of get their eye in a lot better, which one would assume because they're in their natural, you know, court area. Have you thought about like some cross training? Do you guys do any cross training together? I used to play a bit beach volleyball because yeah. my cousin is very, um, yes, involved. into the involved yeah. in the beach volleyball. Um, I think for us it just took some time yeah. starting beach tennis to figure it out because the ball would fly along and you're like, ah, okay, that's in. I think especially for me, I had never been on a beach anything sport-wise before um, in terms of volleyball or anything, so it was a big difference. And only now, strangely enough, only now are we starting to read the court a lot better. But what's fantastic about having a partner is Holger can see better than I can when I'm up looking at the ball. So she'll shout to me whether I should leave it or whether I should play the ball when it's a close, a close to the line because her eye is a lot better than mine. So that helps a lot. Communication when you're playing with each other helps so much with that kind of issue. Very important. Yeah, very, very Communication important. is also a skill you have to actually develop. Um, coming also from the tennis background, because in tennis it's more structured, as yeah. in that's your ball, this is mine. Yeah. Um, and here the whole time, even if it's 100% clear, yeah. it's yours, yours. Yeah, we'll, we'll shine each other. <laughs> even if it's right in front of me, I'll still yeah. mine yours. Beach tennis is new in South Africa, hey? It's about three years old, I think, because um, we started, well, we only started playing together last year, but it was still on the rise or just started about a year before that, where it was just introduced kind of thing. Um, but I think it's been there all the time. Yes. Like you said, everyone plays it on the beach. Yeah. It's just not the professional way. <laughs> so I think it's easy to get people integrated. It's just also to getting it exposed and um, you should literally just take up a paddle um, because yeah. that way we had a couple here actually starting in Tux, yeah. trying to get the juniors involved. Because in Russia there's a senior team, which is us, and there's also junior competition. And we actually wanted to try and get a junior team this year. Um, and we started off here at the core trying to get the juniors involved. Um, it's just difficult at the time because we first have to sort of expand the beach tennis community itself in South Africa before we can also invest in then juniors and splitting it up. And then what has just been the magic between you guys that it's just worked so beautifully since you guys came together? It's actually quite ironic. We are complete polar opposites. opposites. Completely <laughs> different people. Um, but I think that thing of opposites attract, it's worked so well. And even in our game styles, the way we play beach tennis is completely opposite. We don't do... Holga is more aggressive where I am the one that will push you for a lob or that kind of play. Um, so we, it just, I don't know, everything seems to gel. And I think also knowing each other for so long, it has helped us a lot because we don't take things personally and we really, we work well with each other in that way. Yeah, I think the knowing, knowing part each other. is very important because yeah. otherwise we would have sort of got together and like, this causes friction, let's not yeah, do it. We but talk easily about conflict and like I say, constructive criticism. When Helga sees something that I can better, she'll t talk to me about it. And because we know each other so well, it's, it's always positive. There's never a negative connotation to it. Well, positive communication is something that is good news for South Africa because these two ladies will be representing the country at the World Team Championships. And that's what we're going to be talking about when we return. Do stay with The Ladies Club. Remember, our hashtag on social media is hashtag The Ladies Club. Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Thanks for staying with us. We've still got our game changers on the couch here at Pretoria University. Beach tennis players, Kyla Yelberton and Helga Jeske. We're going to be continuing the conversation with our game changers, but not before we tell you about this really exciting bit of news and something that's brilliant for women's sports. The ICC, as well as the England Cricket Board, have welcomed a decision by the Commonwealth Games Federation to nominate 
women's cricket to be one of the sports for the 2022 Commonwealth Games. And this is something that's absolutely brilliant as people take more notice of a women's sport. So well done, Commonwealth Games Federation. And we can't wait to see women's cricket being played at the 2022 edition in Birmingham. So World Championships are coming up. You guys have been training hard. It's all you've been thinking about. It's all you've been dreaming about. What are the hopes? I think our hopes are very high yeah. playing the actual regional tournaments to qualify to go to nationals and bat class. And then when we won that, the, yeah, that was like a dream come true. It was. Um, it really was. Because we really had high hopes for that and um, yes. trained think, hard. Yeah, especially as a pair, because last year we didn't have the opportunity to go together. It was a bit of a different selection process. Um, and this year we really got to prove together that we were good enough and we were the best team that they could send so I think winning nationals was fantastic for us and then after that we realized the hard work started because then we had to really start um, hiring our expectations if that makes sense in terms of knowing that we are now going to be competing on a level that we're not used to in South Africa which is very good for us um, and yeah, only, only when you play the best do you know how good you are so we're excited about that. And that was also good, we played a tournament in Santon and we actually played against the number 34 and 40 in the world and we just lost closely and it was 6-4, 6-4. But it was a really good match. It was and fantastic, yeah. Like in beach tennis, they can swing. Yeah. The momentum change is incredible. Yeah. And we literally lost, I think, three or four deuce points. Yeah, and they just could have swept to our side as well. It was really good. I think it showed us that we can really actually do very well yeah. together. We've, our training is starting to pay off, which is exciting. You guys have had some international competition, though, during the Kia Summit Slam. So if you have to look back six months to when that, you know, series took place around the world and there were international players here in South Africa and where you guys are now, how would you rate them? It's almost 100% different. I mean, yeah. back then we were thinking like tennis players on the beach tennis courts. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, you try and apply a few things that you've learned and, oh, maybe I should do this instead of this. But now we know exactly how to move We've got a bit more experience together. It's worlds apart. And you don't get caught in silly mistakes. Yeah. I think in December it was still, oh, but that's yours. No, it's mine. Oh, yeah. We don't know. <laughs> and now it's very, we know, okay, this is where you, this is where I am. Yeah. The difference is really big. And that's just experience and, yeah, going through different styles as well. Yeah. Yeah. What are you hoping for at the World Team Championships? As a South African team, we really have the players on the men's side as well and our side to do well. It's a matter of, I think, believing it because we're so new in the sport. I mean, this is our second year competing in the World Team Championships and last year the team did very well. But I think our expectations this year are perhaps a bit higher. We know what we're capable of now. So I think we want to do really well for the team. I mean, and there's also quite a difference because yeah. last year there were 28 teams involved. So we ended up um, 18 and this year there are only 16 teams. So it's a, a very a smaller pool, which means your expectations, we would like to win a round because if you win your first round, then you're automatically in the top eight of the world. And if you actually have a look, the top eight, that is quite a reach. But I think that would be very good. Um, if we can definitely get through to the top eight in the world. I think, I think the first goal though, number one, is to be the best um, ranked country on the continent of Africa, because Morocco is also there, yes. and we always want to rank above them. So that, that's the first initial goal, and then I think we'll take it from there. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about who Helga is. She's a physiotherapist, her, uh, her parents are educators. Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are. So if we'd compare it, yeah. I'm more the happy-go-lucky person, <laughs> 100%. Um, yes, I'm in, working in private practice in Gersfontein, still yet in Swart Physiotherapy, enjoying being very active. I could never do a job that's seated and anything like that. Um, very adventurous, um, that's why I also Sounds attempted. Too adventurous. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Travelling together internationally the first time. <laughs> 
Yeah, but um, it's good to have someone in your life telling you maybe that's too far. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> and Kali, you are a uh, IT specialist. You uh, are assistant lecturer here at Tux University. You're busy with your masters. Just tell us a little bit about your interests away from tennis. I'm adventurous, but I'm very cautious. Um, very strong competitive person in everything I do, especially for academics. I think that's pulled through a lot as well. Um, I can be, I think a lot of people think I'm very serious up front, which I am, but initially, w when you get to know me, it's I'm a very laid back person. Um, but yes, at the university, I work as an assistant lecturer currently, and I lecture first and third year modules in the information science department with my masters in IT. I am specializing in big data curation, which is very exciting. Um, hopefully finishing that at the end of this year, starting next year. And then after that, I'd like to move on to my doctorate. And the end goal is to become a full-time lecturer because it's really my passion. I'm, I love public speaking. I have my whole life. I'm really good in front of crowds and I love teaching. I love working with people. That's actually the number one thing, working with people. I can't sit in an office by myself all day. I'd go crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you guys complement each other beautifully on the on the beach tennis court, which is which is the most important thing for, for your partnership and especially going to Russia for the World Team Championships. Uh, so, Helga, where do you see this going? You know, what would you like to achieve when it comes to uh, beach tennis? I think if we have to look a bit long term, um, now we ranked at 150, somewhere around there. I would definitely like to work it up um, to definitely see if you can break into top 50. But that obviously requires more traveling. It requires to also do better in the tournaments um, in the international ones. But there's very good news from the South African side as well that we'll have, again, the Kia Summer Slam in December um, with also higher ranked tournaments, which is good. Um, but yes, I think investing in it and growing it as a mainstream sport in South Africa because, like you said, our beaches are amazing. If someone stays in Durban and Cape Town in PE, you can just go take a net and go play. Um, and it's, therefore it's good that it actually started growing in Khating itself because here we, we showed also that it's possible that it's not only a beach sport, but you can play it in a big city. Kyla, what is your advice to, to any young girls? I mean, you, you're both very busy, you know, away from beach tennis, and then you still manage to, you know, get ready for international tournaments to represent South Africa and to have high hopes of reaching the top 50 in the world. So uh, what is your advice to young girls who also have big dreams and they don't think that they can fit everything in? Time management. It's very important and I think at the moment when you're busy with something put all your energy into that so when you walk away from it at the end of the day for example work and I walk onto the beach tennis court my focus is fully on beach tennis therefore when you are doing something you are doing it productively so even if you do it for a shorter time of, or period of time it's still very productive and also on that note don't be scared of doing more because doing more you open more opportunities for yourself you always have, um, you know, just once again, if you, people think filling up your plate is a bad thing, but if you can handle it, do it. Because that's the only way you'll know your full potential in anything you do. And would you agree with that? Is that the advice that you would like to give to uh, girls and maybe women that are also watching that say, you know, my life is way too busy, I could never fit in all of that. So I would also encourage anyone, you're never too old to play it. It was amazing in Brazil, someone who's 80 year old could still play us off the court. So you're never too old um, and it's, you have to stay fit. As physio advice, as beach tennis for ladies, for women, um, find something where you can invest your heart and passion outside of your work that you can actually have fun and enjoy. Lovely stuff. That's our game changers for today. Helga Jeska and Kyla Yelverton are game changers that will be representing South Africa when it comes to beach tennis on the global stage. Is there something that interests you or maybe somebody that you'd love to see on the show? Game changer, trailblazer? Well, just write us an email. Contact details are on the screen. Next week, Lebo is back in studio. She's back in at the Ladies Club Lounge. And until we meet again, remember that greatness is never ever given. It's always then. Goodbye.